Hi there, this is Corinne from The Woolly Thistle and I'm checking in with you and bringing you a shop update. I hope you're well. Thanks everybody who tuned in to the last one. It was sort of the first time doing it on YouTube and I'm really grateful that uh, you watched and subscribed and many of you left lovely comments. So thanks for that and we're going to try and do it again. Um, I do have a winner from last time so I should tell you right away who that is and that was Nina B. She left a comment and she actually asked about what um, I think are good staple uh, workhorse yarns to have at home in your stash that are really good for just, you know, all different kinds of projects. So I have a couple here. We're just getting straight into this. Nina won a $25 gift certificate. So Nina, get in touch with me. Send me an email at info at thewoollythistle.com and in the Rayline, uh, all caps, winner. That way you stand out and uh, we, get, we get your gift certificate to you right away. So uh, my suggestions for good workhorse staple yarns, um, Rama. Uh, both Finnel Garn and Strick Garn. Finnel Garn is their four ply and Strick Garn is their DK. And I'll bring a project in that um, I've been working on. I don't have it with me today, but I've been working, um, I think it's this color, but in this white, it's a pie shawl. And uh, it is just gorgeous yarn to knit with and it's a workhorse. So other workhorse yarns that I love that I think everybody should have in their stash, of course, Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight. This is a worsted spun, slightly lighter than fingering weight, but um, it floofs up when it's washed, it blooms. And it's woolly Shetland wool. Another good workhorse yarn, I believe, is Tuku, Tuku Fingering from Finland. And uh, I was just noticing this always makes my heart sing. It's a little bit of Finland in there, <laughs> a little bit of grass or something. That's called vegetable matter. And I love it. So yeah, uh, Tuku wool is really lovely to knit with. It's a good, good wool and very versatile. And of course, lastly, Let Lopi. This is sort of like a single spun ply. And actually here is the, it kind of lives here. This is uh, Jay's Riddery and it was knitted all in Let Lopi. And it's just, you just want to pet it. So, those are, like if I was on a desert island and I got to choose a couple of yarns, looks like I have to choose at least four yarns. I'd go with Rama. I'd probably go with Strick Garn, honestly, because that's a DK. Then I'd go with uh, Tuku Fingering. If I only had one yarn, this is it. In all the colors though, all the colors. So, um, Jameson and Smith and Let Lopi. And I brought you them all in sort of natural shades because I love natural shades. But uh, yeah, so Nina B, I hope that answers your question and get in touch so that we can send you off your gift certificate. Thank you for watching and thank you for leaving a comment. So should we do what's new in the shop now or should we do what I'm knitting on? Let's do what's new in the shop, because that's what this is, a shop update. So let's see. Um, this lovely stuff here just was topped up recently. And this is just a couple of the colors. And it is little gray sheep. So you can see that this is a good example of the gray wool being over dyed with the dye. And this one here is Creeping Thistle, which is our very own Woolly Thistle colorway. And I only have a couple of these left right now, even though we got more in. Um, so there's lots of colors. I don't know off the top of my head how many there are. This is a DK weight. It's her Hampshire weight, Little Gray Sheep Hampshire, DK. And I printed off a couple of pictures of it knitted up. Let me find that for you. 
this here is the Stranachlacher, and I'm Scottish, Stranachlacher <laughs> sweater. And the reason I'm showing you this one is just to try and show you how beautiful this yarn knits up. Um, here, you'll all know this one, and I can actually say it, is the Fern and Feather by Jennifer Sanga. It's knitted in Hampshire DK. It's beautiful. And you can find the these all on Ravelry just by searching for little grey sheep on the yarn tab and you can have a look through but it knits beautifully so we have that and also I couldn't put my hands on it right now but we also have uh, this in the four ply mini sets so it's the exact same wool but in a four ply in uh, in little packets of five colors and they do get snapped up but I think there's a couple left so that is that. What else is new in the shop? We have uh, an order from Blacker in, which includes this very precious yarn, St. Kilda. And it comes in two natural shades. So the darker shade and the lighter shade. And St. Kilda, if you don't know, is an island that's very remote off the northwest of Scotland. Um, it's one of the Outer Hebrides and nobody lives there anymore. They lived there I think up until the 50s and then they just abandoned their homes and left the island. They couldn't make it work anymore. But they left the sheep and so the native sheep there are Soe and Bore. And they're just sort of wildly living there now eating off the land. They, uh, they have fleeces that roo. So, you know, they'll, they'll sort of shed themselves. They don't need to be sheared so much. And um, so Blacker gets their fleeces right from St. Kilda. And it's, it's very limited in supply. So this does have some Shetland mixed in to, to spread it out a little bit. But this is beautiful yarn. And it's uh, spun up at a, at a lace weight. So for, for these two, you get 760 yards. Is that yards or meters? Yep, 760 yards per 100 grams. So that's two of these. And I'm going to be knitting my Café de Flore, and I'm going to use this one to knit this. And this is a lovely new design by Virginia Sattler Reimer. And uh, it's very lovely. I think it's just a very stylish, simple, elegant little scarf that shouldn't take too long to knit at all. So that is definitely going on the needle soon, and I'll, I'll show you it when I have it going. So we have lots of this in the yarn in the in the shop. So if you're interested, uh, you can knit sweaters with this. You can knit shawls. A hat would be really nice, and you can knit the cafe de floor. You can find that on Ravelry. Okay. Also from Blacker and Justin, we have. Well, I'm wearing some. This is my calyx sweater by Elizabeth Doherty. Ooh, lovely. And I finished this earlier this year and Elizabeth is Blue Bee Studios and I knitted this, I, th I think it's in the four ply but I don't remember if it's four ply or DK. I think it's four ply though. And it's a lovely sweater. I love the detail on it around here. So clever. All right, so uh, to let you know, because there's lots of this in demand, this is a, of course um, Blacker's Lioness, which is a 50-50 linen and uh, wool blend. I'm trying to find you Ooh, one of each. I don't think I've even got all the colors here, to be honest with you, but, you know, we might have more in, in the stacks back there. <laughs> and it comes in four ply and DK. So we've got as much as we could get. Uh, and it's beautiful yarn and it's so nice to knit with. I don't knit with plant fibers. This might be the only thing oops, I've ever knitted in a, in a plant fiber because um, I like the stretch of the wool on my fingers 
Um, but knitting with this because it's 50% wool, excuse me, uh, they're actually stretched and it doesn't hurt your fingers to knit with it. And it's just lovely. And of course, with the linen, the more you wear it and wash it, the better it gets. And so what would you knit in this? Well, I would definitely recommend the calyx here. This is such a fun and interesting knit, the way the dropped shoulders with this uh, shoulder piece here, the lovely neckline, uh, just the, the design of it. It's, mm -mm -mm. It was a lovely, lovely knit. And I'm looking for... Well, we did those. So what do we have in Lioness? Oh, well, I think this, this sweater here is what's causing all the, the demand, right? And this is Shifting Stands, sorry, Shifting Stands by Nora Gone. It's in the latest making magazine. And this is in Lioness DK. So it's DK quick knit or quicker knit which is just beautiful so if you're interested in knitting that we have the yarn and also um lovely ellie who is skein deer has a new well she has several new patterns out but one of them is the solvic shirt which is like a t-shirt with lace on the front a lace panel she calls for a worsted weight yarn but i bet you Many of us could figure out how to knit that in DK with the lioness. So there's a couple of, of uh, suggestions for that. How are we doing for time? Oh, we're doing fine. Do you have a cup of tea? Okay, so that was that. And what else is new in the shop? Well, it's not quite in the shop yet, but let me talk to you about what's going in the shop and it may well be in by the time this goes live we have our black elephant in the shop it'll be in the shop hopefully tomorrow if not tomorrow over the weekend um i'm just going to show you these one by one i think and tell you what the color is this is feather and it's a tonal and i'm keeping one of these because i like pink did you know and I like green as well. So then this one here is Minerva. Now, let me tell you about the yarn. This is all four ply British blue face luster that was grown and spun in the UK. And it's soft. And of course, Petra, who is Black Elephant, does a phenomenal job dyeing her yarns. This here is Illusion, which makes me think of um, Arrested Development. It's Illusion. So that's this one. Very nice for fall. This one is Ling, and I like this too. A muted pinky, mauve color. Yeah. So yeah, 100% blue face luster made entirely in the UK. This one is Corn Fields. Did I tell you this one was Midsummer Dream? Midsummer Dream, Corn Fields. And then to show you a contrast, this is Golden Coast. Similar, but not the same. Uh, right, Corn Fields, Golden Coast. And are you enjoying this? Because I'm taking my time. This is Pebbles. I love this. I love this. And you know, if you're wondering what you would knit with these, these are sock worthy. So you could knit socks and they should be good. There's no nylon in them though. It's 100% blue face luster. Oh, look at this. What fun. This is rainbow in blighty. Um, shawls. And even I was thinking about Andrea Maury's shifty cowl. She used a sport weight for that. I love this. This is mist. So lovely. But what if you took, um, what if you took a solid and uh, variegated and did a, did a shifty? You know, the mosaic. Okay, so this one here is sensational. I love this too. Look at Oh, 
choco jelly. This color is so good. Dark, dark brown and this on top. Good for fall. Thunderstorm, I love this. And, woo, I'm gonna save lots of blues for the end, it looks like. Arlandria. Oh. I think she does such a gorgeous job. These colors are so deeply saturated, but light when they're light as well. Okay, and then another fall color is Promise. Look at that, that's like a, a mint green in there. Okay, and then there is Nevermind with nice blues and aquas and pinks. And we have Hallucinations which is more blues and greens and browns and purples and the dark side oh, so blue I can think of someone who's going to really like this when she sees it and this one here is Gilead Yeah, and then this is the last one, and it's Ocean Warrior. Quite peacockish, isn't it? Lovely. So thank you, Petra, for getting these all out to me. So beautifully done. Look at all these blues. Whoa. And then for the tonals, I think this is what we have. Oh, oh love it and then we have lots of kind of pinkies and gray pinkies and then we just have uh, fun blues now these are different let me see never mind and rainbow over blighty yeah they are quite different but similar colors too and then I would say these are all really good fall ones right here, right? Yeah. So lots and lots to choose from. Um, we're just waiting for the photos to be finished, um, getting set up to go in the shop. And as soon as that's done, they will be in the shop. Shall I leave that there where you can see it? How about that? Okay, all right. Okay, so let's see. Uh, I've told you about that, told you about that. Um, Told you about that. The Armscott Manor love has been quite strong. So thank you for uh, your interest in this yarn and for buying your own stash. These are the greys. This uh, you'll know if you watched last time, but if not, I'll give you a quick rundown. This is a um, Portland sheep, which is a very rare endangered sheep in the UK now. It's one of the oldest breeds in the UK. Um, and it's actually mentioned in the Doomsday book, which is a very old medieval book of, uh, of all kinds of stuff, including births, deaths and marriages and, you know, how much a sack of corn would cost and things like that. Made in Britain. So uh, this is Portland. This is all DK white. And then this is Black Welsh Mountain, which oh, I love. I love a good dark brown natural. So they have a few Black Welsh Mountain, but they're mainly uh, they're mainly breeding Portland. But then when they put those two fleeces together and mill them up together, and they're spun at um, Natural Fibre Company, which is blacker, you get these lovely greys. So we've got a dash and a splash of Black Welsh Mountain in these to make it a nice grey. This is a great, great yarn. This is... Uh, Soulful stash, if ever there was such a thing. And uh, when you support the woolly thistle, you're also supporting small producers, small mills, independent mills, and farmers and shepherds who really care about preserving 
a breed. And we're just helping them out, paying them for what they're doing. So that's that. So yeah, check that out. It's a lovely, lovely yarn and we have plenty of it. Now, should we talk about what I'm knitting on right now? I think we should. Um, first up, does anybody have a bag with the old black and white logo? That was the original bag. Now they're all, uh, they all have color on them, but I like my old one here. So yes, Devonia. I've been talking about this for such a long time and finally it's happening. I did choose to knit with the Broken Flower color and Devonia is by John Arbin. It's a finger weight um, four breed blend from uh, Devon sheep, hence Devonia. And if you want to know what they are, we've got Exmoor Blueface, Blueface Lester and Lensleydale. All sheep roaming around in Devon. How's my focus on that? And so I'm a handballer. I don't use a swift or a, or, um, a ball winder. And it's taken me forever to actually get cast on. And this is as far as I've got. I'm, oh, did I tell you I'm knitting the Tegna by Caitlin Hunter? Yeah, so I'm starting the lace portion because it's bottom up. And so far, so good. I'm really enjoying it. These are on my Haya Haya uh, sharps, which we sell. And I love these. There's actually a knit four in here. So these sharps are perfect for that. And what was I going to tell you about this? I feel like I was going to tell you something about this. Oh, I swatched. I wanted to show you my wee swatchy. So I don't know if you're a swatcher or not. I am sometimes and I'm not other times. And I talked about this on the podcast last week. Uh, on the audio podcast. So I decided to swatch and I wanted to share my swatch with you. I'm sure all of you know this and have your own ways of doing things, but I thought I'd share how I did mine. The only reason I decided to swatch was because right up front in the pattern, she said that people's gauge varied between US 3 and US 7, which is a big, big change because down here, through my fault, I picked up a US 2, the gauge is really quite tight. And then this was US 3, I think this was 6, and then 7. And you can see it's sort of a funnel shape getting wider. I couldn't believe I had to go up to US 7. I don't think I'm that tight a knitter, but apparently I am. I don't know if you can see. You can see how bulletproof it is down here, and you can see through it the further up you go. So you're going to have much better drape um, with the bigger needle size. So anyway, um, I knitted this in the round because you should knit the way you're going to knit the actual garment. Um, you know, it's all well and good to knit a swatch back and forth and get gauge, but then if you're going to be knitting in the round, it will change your gauge. So I knit this in the round, but I don't knit the whole thing. I just, uh, so I get to the end of the row and then I'd carry the yarn around the back of my hand and just start over again. So I would just fake knitting in the round with, I'd have all these uh, lines of, of yarn. And then I cut them, tied them in knots so that things wouldn't unravel, and then measured my gauge. The other thing I wanna say about this is in between each needle change, I did a whole row of garter stitch. And I don't know about you, but you know, sometimes you swatch for something and then you put it down and forget all about it. And when you come back, you have no idea what you did with, you know, you got gauge but with what needle not not a clue so the way I do that is I will do a row of pearl bumps in the middle of the swatch and I'll do the number of stitches that the needle is so us 7 I've got seven pearl bumps there right that makes good sense right so no matter when I know when I come back to this that that um, this here is us 7 and I can measure it and see that I got gauge with that or not with six not with three so I hope you found that a wee bit interesting and helpful. It definitely was helpful to me to swatch for this because usually I would just cast on and knit a sleeve and go. But she did a good thing of alerting me to the wide range of needles. So I did check it out and it was a good thing. So yes, I'm really enjoying this. I think that once I get going, this will knit up nice and fast. Even though it's a fingering weight, it's on a US 7. 
The other thing I'm knitting on right now is something that I don't sell in the shop. Um, and I'm very, very choosy about what I knit that's not part of the woolly thistle because I have so many fantastic yarns, I do say so myself, that I don't really need to shop anywhere, <coughs> anywhere else, do I? But there is one vendor who consistently, consistently, consistently gets me all in a flap for her, for her yarn. So this, of course, you've heard me talk about it on the podcast, is Tidal Yarns. And this time I went with worsted weight yarn. Ah, it's so lovely. She mostly, if not always, gets her yarn spun up at Green Mountain Spinnery in Vermont, which is just down the road from me. And she uh, sources her wools locally and there'll be different things in there from from different years. I have, this will be my fourth sweater that I've got from Patricia. And she is lovely. And if you ever are around New England or New York, she'll be at all the festivals. She will be at Rhinebeck. So definitely go check her out. She's in one of the barns at Rhinebeck. And she naturally dyes all her yarns. And she has the most beautiful setup with um, all her skeins um, hanging on pegs full length, you know? Like this, just rows of this loveliness hanging, ready to be loved. Okay, so what am I knitting with this? I'm knitting uh, her pattern, which she provides. You know, she has lots of patterns that you can use to knit her yarn. And I'm going with the Comfort Tea this time. Sorry, the big fold in the middle of the page. So that's the two colors. So that's the main color, and then I'm using the lilac for the bottom. And it's knitted top down. It's a simple raglan. Love it. And I cast this on some some point, maybe the weekend after I recorded this last time. And yeah. Knitting up really nice and fast. Um because this is hand dyed, you gotta be careful when you're uh, changing the yarn balls. And so when I, um, when I put the sleeves on to scrap yarn, I did it before, I did it before, I, I did it when I still had a lot of yarn left on the ball. Because, yeah, so I've still got all this. And I could have just kept knitting down the body with this, but I didn't. I finished and I, well, I started on the body, I started um, alternating skins with a new ball and I'll do that with the, um, with the sleeves and this into the next color or into the next skein. And that way you hopefully avoid any hard lines when you change skeins. It's just a precaution. Mm. I rarely knit with worsted weight, but I'm gonna love this. I'm gonna love it. Yeah. Right, so that's what I've been knitting on, these two things. These are my works in progress right now. And I just finished the Burra Cowl. So here it is. All Kitchenard. That was a bit of a fan call. And um, let's see. Yeah, I had done a couple of different things. I three needle bound off here because I think I forgot the plot, honestly. And then I started kitchenering it. You can see it's kitchenered. If you look real close, it's not that, that great, but you know what? I don't care. It's going back here. Here it is. And it is actually really just perfect. Yeah, I'm gonna like wearing this. It's really lovely. It's too hot for today. Um, yeah. Let's see. I did screw up the colors. So this is the way it should be. And yeah. 
Anyway, one of these, I think this is where I screwed up. It's very light gold and it should be the darker. But who cares? It's lovely. Oh, talking to Marie Wallen. This is uh, the Barakel by Marie Wallen, uh, knitted in Shetland Spindrift. And I sell kits of these. And we should have more of these coming in real soon. Hopefully next week or the week after. Hopefully not too much longer. Because I know a lot of you are waiting for this to come in. So uh, when we do get the Spindrift in, we will have kits for the Yale cardigan, the Bressa sweater, the Burra Cowl, the Scaries mitts and the Scalloway Tam, and I'm going to also include the Unst cardigan, which I will show you a picture of next time because I don't have it here, but it's a lovely color work. And all of these patterns are from her book Shetland, so which you can get here as well. Plenty of those in, and actually I've got more coming in. So that's that. Um, let's see, what else am I? Oh gosh. All right, let's keep going. I'm all over the place, I see. So, right, da 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 da. I was gonna say, we're also going to be getting more of Marie Wallen's British Breeds yarn. We have some colors in stock and some have sold out. Uh, we don't have any of her kits for the British Breeds or the Wildwood book. Uh, they went in and they went right out again. So we are getting more yarn and I think that'll arrive here early part of September. And we will do the Hawthorne cardigan from the cover of her Wildwood book and the Walnut Tam. We'll have kits for those. All right. I need to tell you quickly about, and I'm just looking at the time. It's easy to, to let time go and I'm sorry. Uh, we're at 32 minutes. Um, so quickly, the Willie Thistle second annual sweater cowl is casting on on August 23rd, which is next Friday. And I hope you're going to join us. Everything's happening on Ravelry, although we can post on Instagram and there'll be a hashtag. There is a hashtag. I think it's TWT sweater cowl 2019. We have fantastic designers participating and the way they participate is by offering discounts on their patterns and they offer prizes uh, for the cowl as well. So um, I heartily suggest that you go to the Willie Thistles Ravelry group and in there find the sweater cowl thread and in there read the list of the designers who are offering discounts. Just a sampling. We have Gudrun Johnson offering 20% off her Shetland Trader patterns. We have Nora Gone offering 25% off some of her patterns. Michelle Wang 25%, Elizabeth Doherty 25% off. Um, and Amy Christopher's is giving 20% off and we have more than that too and more people are coming in all the time. So um, you have to go to the Ravelry group, find the thread and then look at the list and then read uh, which patterns are included. Quite oftentimes they've been very helpful and given us a bundle of patterns that the discount applies to. And the discount is the same for everyone. So once you have that discount, which you get in the Ravelry group, then it's the same discount no matter where you go shopping. And um, just thank you very much to those wonderful designers and um, we have a full list of them on the Ravelry group. I hope you're signed up for the Woolly Thistles newsletter because I will be uh, sharing more information there um, and it's really fun and I'm excited for it. I haven't decided yet what I'm knitting, which is classic, but I will have decided by Friday. Um, and there's already lots of chatter in there with people talking about what they're going to be knitting. Um, so please come join us. We're always in our cows. I'm really proud. We're always friendly. We're always, you know, happy to help people out. And, um, and there's always good banter in there. So come and join us. And it doesn't matter if you're not finished. By the, by the end of the cow, nothing bad happens to you. Um, it is an eight week cow, so it's a sweater in eight weeks. Last year we had a lot of first time sweater knitters and I hope lots of them will come back, but if you've never knit a sweater, this is a great chance to, to do that with some camaraderie and with a lot of good, um, good experience right at your fingertips uh, in the group. And what else do I need to tell you? Um, it's an adult size sweater with full sleeves and or an adult's vest that is all over color work. And 80% um, of the yarn used in the project has to have been purchased at the Woolly Thistle at some point. 
So you don't have to shop for it today. Um, it could be stuff in your stash and you want to use that. So that's fine, but just, you know, at least 80% of it to come from the woolly thistle. That would be great. Uh, we have a cast on prize, uh, Tori Rowe, uh, lovely Tori Searstead is giving away two or three patterns off the top of my head, I think it's three, um, on the day we cast on, so that's exciting. And then the prize fairy will be popping in uh, the chowder thread from time to time throughout the uh, cal and sprinkling some woolly thistle sprinkly fairy dust uh, in the way of gifts. And then we have end of cal prizes from designers the grand prize is $100 to the woolly thistle. It's all good. So come and knit with us and, um, and whips count as well. So go to the Ravelry group. All the rules are there, such as they are, and uh, you can get your ducks in a row and join us. Uh, please join the Ravelry group. Uh, that would be great as well. And talking of that, please subscribe to the Woolly Thistles YouTube channel. Um, you're here and I would love it if you got a notice every time I put a put a new update up so that you can watch and join me while we blether away about knitting and wool and all the good stuff. Let's do a giveaway. Uh, let's do another giveaway. So um, I'm gonna give away a $25 gift certificate to the Woolly Thistle to um, someone picked at random, but you gotta leave a comment below. You have to subscribe to the Woolly Thistle channel and Give me a thumbs up, yeah, wee thumbs up thing. Give me a wee thumbs up. That would be great. Tell your friends about the Woolly Thistle and get them to come watch and see if, if they enjoy the update and maybe they'll hop on over to the shop as well because of course that's what I would love to have happen. And um, yeah, so summer has been really busy in the shop, really busy. Thank you for shopping with me. I love that we are all daily knitters, no matter what the weather is. I'm afflicted with it too, and I'm okay with that. Um, so it's been busy in the shop and we are trying to get ahead of the curve and be ready for fall because we anticipate that it's gonna be very busy, which is good. And uh, thank you so much for making that happen and supporting the Woolly Thistle. I think that's all I've got for you today. Um, I'll be up with a new audio podcast next Friday, back here the Friday after that. And um, yeah, tell me what you like about the podcast. If it is a podcast, a shop update, whatever it is, tell me what you like about it in the comments. Do leave a comment so that you'll be in the drawing for the um, for the gift certificate. I'm happy to, to give that to a lucky, lucky viewer. All right, so I guess all this left